What's going on guys, welcome back to today's video. Today we're gonna to go over everything you need to know about exponents. Not just the basic exponent concepts, but we're gonna go more in depth on these advanced questions, which are the ones that students are missing the most. Exponent is just one of those topics that College Board loves to put on their SAT exams. And if you're taking SAT at some point, you're, you're guaranteed, you're guaranteed to see these questions at some point in your life. And if you're not familiar with these types of exponent questions, there's a very high chance that you are going to get them wrong because you just don't know how to solve them so that you know exactly what to expect and you know how to solve each of these types of questions. So make sure you stick to the end of the video so you can familiarize yourself with every single type of question out there. So how this video is structured is first, I'm gonna go over the five different categories of exponent questions. And then I'm gonna go a little bit more in depth into each question telling you how you can recognize the, these questions and how to solve each of them. And let's say you're not feeling too comfortable with these types of exponent questions, then don't worry, there's also going to be a link to the video of a full exponent lecture covering everything you need to know about the basic exponents to advanced exponents for the SAT. So if you're ready, let's get straight into it. So this is what you need to know for exponent questions on the SAT. The first type is you need to know how to add and subtract exponents, and you want to know how fractional exponents work. And third, you want to know how you can multiply exponents when you multiply exponents or divide exponents. And fourth, you want to know how to distribute exponents. And lastly, you want to know how matching bases work. So let's get straight into these questions. In this video, I'm going to use the word base a lot. So let me first explain what the base is. Let's say we have some kind of term called 6x squared, right? Then in this case, x is going to be your base, and here's why. 2 is going to be your exponent. And whatever the exponent is applied to is what we call the base. And we know that this 2 is applied directly to the x, therefore x is going to be your base. And 6 is not going to be the base because 2 is only applied to the x and not the 6. And 6, we call that the coefficient. Okay, it's the number attached to a variable, therefore it's going to be a coefficient. However, let's say we have something like this, 6x parentheses square. Okay, then our exponent here is going to be 2. And our base in this case would be, what do you think? It's going to be 6x because the exponent is not applied to x only, but to 6x as a whole. Therefore, 6x is going to be our base for this. Okay. So it's really important for you to understand what base is and base is whatever the exponent is applied to. Okay, does that make sense? Hope so. Let's get straight to this question. All right, the question asks, a is equal to b plus two, what's the value of three to the a times three to the minus b? Okay, you see how these two numbers are sharing the same base? What you need to know is that when the bases are the same, you can start adding or subtracting exponents okay if the bases are the same and if you're multiplying that's when you add and if you're dividing that's when you're subtracting exponents in this case it's 3 to the a times 3 to the minus b right and same base and you multiply what do you do you add exponents so it looks like this 3 to the a plus minus b which comes out 3 a minus b okay so the, our original version can be simplified or rearranged into 3 to the a minus b and we have to ask ourselves okay we got that but what are we going to do with it we have to ask ourselves where is a minus b where can we possibly see that if you look at the beginning of the question it gives you a is equal to b plus 2 and we know that if we move b just to the left it becomes a minus b is equal to 2 which is the same thing as the current exponent right that means we can substitute 2 into a minus b which becomes 3 to the second power, which is going to be nine. Our answer is going to be nine. Does that make sense? So what usually people do is they try to plug in a number for A and plug in a number for B, and they try to come up with a number that works and then plug it in. And then it's just, it's just complicated. It's a whole lot of mess and you don't have time to do that on the SAT. You want to go as fast as possible. And the only way you can do that is by understanding when you can adding and subtracting exponents. Make sense? Hope so. Let's go to the next one. Okay, the second type is going to be fractional exponents. So how does fractional exponent work? Let me give you a quick example. For example, let's say we have three to the two thirds, then it would it can be rewritten into cube root of three squared. Okay, how this works is your denominator is going to be your root. Okay, if it's three, it's going to be cube root. If it's two, it's going to be square root. And your numerator is going to be exponent of the base, okay? So if your numerator is two, that means 
our base of 3 is going to be squared, therefore it was squared like that. And you have to remember that it's going to be under the radical. Okay. There's going to be another version that you need to know, but it doesn't apply to this question, so we're going to skip it. But we can also go over that in the full length lecture if you'd like. So let's go over this. So let's look at this question. If this times this is equal to a to the n for all the values, values of a, what's the value of n, right? So, so what, what most people, people do is they look at this question and they're like, okay, let me plug in the number for a and number for n and let me, let's just hope that it works out. And the thing is, it just doesn't work out. It takes forever and they get discouraged and they're like, you know what? There goes another question. But let me save you. Here's what you do. You want to use fractional exponents. So if we have fifth root of a to the fourth and let's see cube root of a to the second and they're multiplied is equal to a to the n we can rearrange this radical into a fractional exponent and we know that five is going to be your denominator and we know exponent is going to be your numerator times same thing a to the three because that's the denominator and two that's going to be the numerator it's going to be a to the n and Remember from last time, if the bases are the same and you're multiplying, what you do is you add exponents, which means a to the fourth fifth plus two thirds is equal to a to the n, right? And if you look at it, they have the same base, okay? Left side and the right side, they have the same base, which means as long as you are exponent are the same, that means your result as a whole is going to be the same, okay? Here's, let me give you an example if that doesn't make sense. Let's say you have something like 2 to the 3 is equal to 2 to the x plus 1, right? And if you look at it, the bases are the same, which means as long as our exponents are the equal, that means this whole thing is going to be equal. Does that make sense? So if your bases are the same, what you can do is you can just pull out the exponents. 3 is equal to x plus 1 and minus 1 minus 1, x is equal to 2. You can solve it out like that, okay? And that's exactly what we're going to do for this question right here. So how does it work? We we have a same base and it's equal. So what we do is we pull out exponents, pull out exponents, okay? So it looks like 4 fifth plus 2 thirds is equal to n. And if we just give it the common denominator, it's gonna be, let me rewrite it here. So we're gonna multiply top and bottom by three and multiply top and bottom by five here. And you're gonna get 12 over 15 plus 10 over 15, and which is going to be 22 over 15, and that's going to be the value of n. And if you look at the answers, our choice C has the exact same thing, therefore our answer is going to be choice C. Does that make sense? Good. I would highly recommend you guys understand how fractional exponents work, because if not, these questions will be nearly impossible for you to solve in 25 minutes. I mean, this question might by itself might take 25 minutes. And that's how you solve this question. Let's go to the next one. Multiplying exponents, okay? So we know when we are adding and subtracting exponents, but how do we know when we multiply the exponents, right? Well, let's go to this question. For a positive real number x, where x to the eighth is two, what's the value of x to the 24th, okay? So let's, let's just kind of write down important information. It tells us that x to the eighth is two, and we're looking for x to the 24th, and wonder what that is, right? And the moment you see it, you see an eight and you see a 24, and if you think about it, if you multiply eight by three, it becomes a 24. Is that a coincidence? No, that's exactly what SAT wants you to do. So you have to ask yourself, when can I multiply exponents? How can I multiply exponents, right? And here's the thing. Here's the thing. When do you multiply exponents? When there is an exponent on exponent, that's when you multiply exponents, okay? So here's what I mean by exponent on exponent. Let's say you have two to the third to the fifth power. That is an exponent, which is this, on another exponent, right? So when there's an exponent on exponent, you multiply them together, which becomes two to the 15th. And let's say, for example, three to the third to like seventh power, again, exponent on an exponent, which is you multiply three to the 21, okay? So x to the eighth, and we need it to be multiplied by three. What do we do? We put another exponent to it, and that's going to be to the third power. And obviously for math, you do it on one side, you have to do it on the other side. Same thing, to the third power. And let me just rewrite down here. So we cube, cube it and we also cube the other side. It's a terrible looking three. 
To the other side, it looks like x to the 24 is 2 to the 3rd power, and 2 to the 3rd we know is going to be 8, so our answer is going to be D. Does that make sense? So the main takeaway here is multiplying exponents, when do we do it? When there is an exponent on exponent. All right. Let's go to the next question. The question tells us that we're looking for equivalent forms of that in A, B, C, and D, and what we have to do is just distribute the exponents. So what do we do? Minus 4 x to the cube, 2 thirds is distributing it to minus 4 and x to the third. So let's do it separately. Minus 4 to the 2 thirds times x to the third to the 2 thirds. Okay. So minus 4 to the 2 thirds is going to be minus 4 to the 2 thirds. And we know that x, uh, fractional exponents, it works by cube root because that's going to be your denominator and minus 4 and the base is squared which is cube root of 16 which is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 that's what 16 is and there's 3 of 2 so it comes out 2 cube root of 2 and that's going to be what our first term is equal to I mean first uh, first half is equal to second half is going to be x to the third times two third and you know exponent on an exponent what do we do we multiply x to the third times two over three which is threes cancel out which gives us x squared right so minus four to the two third is two cube root two and x to the third to the two third is x squared and when we multiply these two together it becomes two cube root of two times x squared which is going to be 2x squared cube root of 2, right? And let's see if there's anything that looks like that. And choice C looks like that. It's just 2x squared times cube root of 2. These two things are separated by a multiplication, okay? So that's how you do distribution of exponents. Does that make sense? Good. Let's go to the next one. Matching of the bases. This is a popular one. So if the question says, if 3x minus y is equal to 12, what's the value of 8 to the x and 2 to the y? Okay, so here's a pro tip, guys. Whenever you see a variable like x, y, z as exponents, it's going to be a exponent question. That's a terrible, you know what, let me write that. It's going to be a exponent question. Okay, let me repeat that one more time. Whenever you see a variable as an exponent on the SAT, it's going to be a exponent question. Make sure you remember that, okay? So, how do we find the answer to this? It's kind of similar to the first one that we did. You see how it gives you one of the equations and then there's that, and we just have to make this somehow similar to that, and then we can get the answer quickly. Same thing, if we can turn this similar to that somehow, we're gonna be able to find our answer super quickly. So how do we match our match our bases? You see how 8 to the x and 2 to the y? Let me rewrite that. 8 to the x divided by 2 to the y, right? And remember, when, uh, when we multiply or divide same base, you add or subtract exponents, right? And if you look at it, they are close, but they're not sharing the same base, which means we can't really do anything about the exponents. So what do we do? We can match the bases. And here's what I mean. You see 8 right here? We want to make 8 into a 2. So how do we do that? We just find a equivalent form of 8. And 8 is the same thing as 2 to the 3rd power, right? So whether you have 8 to the x or 2 to the 3rd to the x, it's the same thing because 8 and 2 to the 3rd is exactly the same thing. And if we do that exponent on an exponent, it becomes 2 to the 3x, right? And if we substitute this into the original equation that we had, it becomes 2 to the 3x divided by 2 to the y. And now what happens? We have the same base. And if you have the same base and you're dividing, you have to subtract the exponents. So it becomes 2 to the 3x minus y, and that's what we're trying to find. But hey, look, 3x minus y, let's look at the question. Oh, 3x to the minus y is going to be 12, which is means we can substitute 12 for 3x minus, 3x minus y, which means it can be 2 to the 12th. And our answer is going to be A, okay? So 
matching bases, when do you want to do it? You see an exponent, but you can't really do anything about it because the bases are different. You want to match bases. How do we do that? You just find a equivalent form of the base that you're trying to change and just substitute it in. And you always want to go from a big, big exponent, I mean big base, into a small base. You don't want, ever want to go from 2 to 8. You want to go from 8 to 2. Okay? Always reduce your bases. And those are going to be the five types of question guys. So exponent is one of those topics that we think we know, but in reality, we are kind of shaky on them. And that's why you want to really hone down on these basic skills. Adding and subtracting exponents, changing bases, matching bases, multiplying exponents, fractional exponents, all that, that kind, kind of stuff. stuff. Make, Make sure, sure you really, really understand, understand these things, things because, because if you don't, these questions are, questions are going to come up and you're going to miss at least one of them. And that just sucks because you know it was coming, but you missed it because you were lazy. Don't do that, guys. Take a second, really learn how these things work. If you knew how to solve the past five questions easily, I think you're set. There's nothing you really need to worry about, at least for X months. However, if you are shaky on it, if the questions kind of didn't make sense and you're like, okay, why did he, he just do that? If that was you, I highly recommend you go down to the link in the descri description box below and go to a private lecture because it's going to be a full on lecture going over the basics of the exponents and going into the advanced level questions that show up on the SAT. And to make sure that you guys are following along the lecture easily and absorbing all the materials, I have also attached a worksheet where you can print out and follow along with the lecture. And to make this even better, I've gone through all the released SAT exams and pulled out the exponent questions and put them into a problem set. It's available for you to download and try it out after you finish watching the lecture. If you can do all those questions, I think you are set. Nothing for you to worry about. If you guys like this video, hit the like button. If you guys want to see more of this video, hit the subscribe button. If you hate this kind of video, make sure you hit the like button and the subscribe button because every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I release these kind of videos summarizing what you need to know for the SAT. And for you, it's heck of a lot easier for you to just watch a eight minute video, more like actually 15 minute video, than going through books for hours and hours and hours and try to read and try to understand what you need to know for the SAT. And as always, if you guys have any questions or concerns or comments, make sure you leave it in the description box down below. And guys, pay attention here. This is the most important part of the video. If there's something you wanna see next, make sure you leave it in the description box. I mean, not description box, because you can't comment on that. But leave it in the comment box down below what you want to see next, because this channel is solely based on what you guys want to see next. Okay? Anyways, guys, that's it for today's video. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye-bye. I know this shit don't impress you So no bullshit, girl, nothing extra Girl, I ain't playing games I wanna take your whole